Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. And, well, we continue on from last week. Uh, I haven't seen any feedbacks about how you guys like or dislike the idea of the Commenters Edition. But I, I feel like there's a lot of traction with it. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that we can do with it. So I do hope that you comment down below telling me what you think about it and whatnot. And if you would like to continue on. Because I feel like this is a way that we can connect. So anywho, let's hop right into it. So for Friendship is Magic comic book issue 91 and 92. <clears throat> And part two, glad that I caught this. It'll be interesting to hear what you think about the rest of season 10, or at least much of it as is currently out at the moment. So um, I'm just going to address this one here. In all honesty, um, I've just read until episode four, which is the uh, Pharisian Shores arc. And I like it. I, I, I enjoy the idea. Um, it's <laughs> knowing that it's just a quote unquote carbon copy of season one, episode one and two is a bit disappointing. But at the same time, too, I do want to see where where they uh, can um, run with this idea. I mean, I, I do want to see what they can do with this idea in the long run. Uh, but f as for now, I've only seen the first year insurers. And in all honesty, like I mentioned last week, we, we kind of need a supplementary comic book for this. Because if we just go by this, we don't really know who they are or get invested with the characters. So it's a bit of a um, downside. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's continue on. If I could maybe offer a small bit of critical feedback, the proper pronoun for a non-binary individual like Dusty Devil is they or them, i.e. they did this, they did that, it belongs to them, <clears throat> etc. Even if they are a single individual, I get that this is hard to get into the habit, especially after years, after a lifetime of being taught to use either he or she and nothing else. Technically, there is something else. I'll address it later. It's difficult. You won't pretend. <clears throat> I won't pretend otherwise, but it is important to try to get the pronouns right and can be real sore spot for people when they don't address appropriately um yes i i i remember this one this one is one of those things where uh, being from malaysia i have not experienced this at all honestly uh yeah i i have not experienced this at all so i got no idea but i, I did remember asking you commenter that couldn't you just use you because when you use they or them, it sounds like you're ex ostracizing them. Because, like, oh, boys, oh, it's those people or it's their kind. You see where I'm coming from. I mean, it sounds bad in a sense. But if you use, like, you, like, how are you doing? Or... There you are. Uh, did you do this? But I, I see what you mean by if you're addressing, um, like like uh, what you just said. They did this. You did this. You see, you, you can replace they with you. Uh, you did that. It belongs to you. <laughs> I mean, you could use that too. But at the same time, too, you could always use their name. Uh, the Steve Devil did this. <laughs> uh, but you know, honestly, like I mentioned before, I have not experienced this and I got no idea. But my brain has been so wired into the uh, proper pronoun and whatnot. And oh God, it's, it's like learning something new 
just to accord- um, accommodate for uh, sorry it's literally something new to accommodate for the times but at the same time to uh, man I feel like I'm old because I don't understand what the trend is so yeah I mean this one is going way over my head okay <coughs> let's move on to the next one <coughs> One thing that was mind scratching with the rock was rock rock was why didn't she just do a leap of faith over the bridge and glide off? Here's the thing. Uh, the reason why is that she was heavy and there was not enough air current to lift her up. So if she did a leap of faith, she would have just been stuck lower and technically can't get up at all so it does raise the fact that can she fly for short distances because no i, I think the, the rock was always there to begin with like on the bridge mm -hmm. so yes uh doing so might get her killed mm. <clears throat> here's the one cardinal sin i mentioned some time ago that jeremy whitley committed he inserted and uh what's this yeah yes <clears throat> an auditory genre in a purely visual genre ah this one i have to agree i mean uh, it makes reviewing faster but yes um it's, it's one of those things where it's i i get the idea i i get what they're aiming for i get what they're going for but at the same time too if you have if if you have this awesome musical idea but you can't really um use it i mean it's it's one of those things where okay um a good example of this is uh i'm, I'm reading through a manga called uh saori's experience uh it's a girl who gets haunted and possessed by the ghosts of Jimi Hendrix. The only difference there is that if you want to listen to uh, the comic, like what she's playing, you just go pop in one of Jimi Hendrix song on YouTube or iTunes or wherever it is. But for this one here, what we're getting, um, nah, man, we, we, we can't because it's totally original and whatnot. Like, Remember the Friends Forever um, micro series Pinky, where uh, Pinky uh, cheered up a clown called Pony Archie, and somehow uh, we got awesome fan, uh, awesome fans to write and produce songs for that, and it's a really good song. Too bad that it's hidden or deleted. I, I don't remember, but still, um, the song is really awesome. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is a writer for the uh, Christmas special. Like, they did... Uh, remember the Flim Flam Brothers had a... Was it the Flim Flam Brothers? Yes, the Flim Flam Brothers. They had a product that they wanted to push and they kind of did it in song. Somebody, uh, the, the writer, kind of asked his brother, something like that, I don't remember, uh, to do a song for it. And... It turned out well, and yeah, that's awesome. For this one, I wish he did the same thing too, because how do I put this? He did the whole thing, and then he could just have like, uh, on his personal Twitter thing says that, "Yo, guys, there's a song in the comic book, and I know how you feel about songs, so uh, I hired a bunch of artists to kind of." Uh, do a rendition of the song uh, and kind of make it too real. I mean, if they if he did that, then I won't be too salty about it. So, yeah, it's one of those things where I get what you mean, I agree with it, and there's no, there's no, there's no. no. <clears throat> okay. And I think Andy Price was on the same page based on the cover he made for the third issue with Tempest giving the readers a head up warning, blah, blah, blah. Yes, uh, no argument here. Also, thanks for the shout out. No problem. 
the final issue was is where the overarching problem spawns but it does settle in uh, it doesn't settle in until we continue the main story again a few issues later Zakura's story is the only one that has the main six gets element of harmony beats for beat but it it's the part that <coughs> sorry beat for beat but it's the part that they are multiple trees okay uh, they are multiple trees of harmony and that six characters related to a sp specific land will get them is where the predict uh, predictability problem comes and because that's where the main uh, focus lies we don't have any time to get to know the world we're visiting and getting attached to i agree with that yes and yeah i mean uh I, okay from what i'm hearing you say you're telling me that only zakura has the whole um season one episode one and two problem so okay um going forward we'll get something different that's good that's good so we'll, we'll have to wait and see and yeah um on your part of not getting uh attached to the world and whatnot that i i totally get you i mean i totally understand what you mean and this is where if they have a side story a supplementary comic for the world that would be totally awesome maybe two issues one issue um just at least we get to know more of the world we, we get some kind of attachment to it uh, that's all we want like we, we want to be attached to or be invested in the story that we're reading i i don't blame you for um feeling that way so let's see uh, okay <coughs> let's move on as for zukura this is where i realized that jeremy uh <laughs> this is uh, <coughs> this is where i realized why the why jeremy would leave remove uh, any traces of zebra magic even the, even ex uh, existing um, ever existing even though it runs in contradiction with what was established if sakura or rather zebras as a whole already had the use of magic in some form even if they weren't born with it like kelpies or abbas abadas 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 then the whole story couldn't have happened in the first place when i originally read this issue i was high on dopamine not uh, with the dopamine with sakura's obsession uh, sakura obsession which is why i like it because hey it's something better than nothing but once i settled down i realized how dirty the zebras as a whole were treated heck i'll go for silver's original idea from that last video where the conflict would be progress versus tradition but that's not the story generally we wanted to even uh yeah, sorry um no not the story jeremy wanted to tell though he had the perfect setup line okay mm. i do remember that <clears throat> uh in the comics they did mention that if the zebras got their cutie marks uh, it will be represented um how how it was like they mentioned that uh, their QE mark will represent the one special thing that they can do and stuff but that's about it i mean think about it this way uh the zebras are equivalent to equestria's earth ponies so there's no difference there like when you think about it what do earth ponies do uh, depends on what they're well they can almost do anything they can uh do agriculture 
um, sauna stuff. I mean, there's a lot of things they can do, so there's no problem there. Other than that, I, I don't see any problems by... I, I guess I know what you mean by them just telling you out of nowhere and stuff. Yes, not really cool, but you know what? I, I feel like it's not big of a problem with this one. It's annoying though, but yes. So, yeah. The whole, what, uh, tradition versus... Um... Yes, progress was a tradition. That was one of those things where it was a good setup, but yeah, he didn't take it, so it was wasted. Mm. Can't do much. So, anywho, moving on. <coughs> As a side note, we got Zakura's uh, sorry, uh, Zakura in princess form during the Fluttershy and during Do's Friends Forever issue. I forgot. Man, I totally forgot about that one. <sighs> I saved this part for last. The Dust Devil part frustrates me to no end. When I first read this issue, I kept thinking to myself, mm, What the hey is wrong with writing? With the writing. Uh, the editor was being really sloppy. But after I saw... Silver, Silver's written review on Equestria Daily and put out what the author said. I just, uh, I got just plain angry. Jeremy Whitley pulled a really dumb move, basically introducing uh, identity politics into a children's comic. Hmm. <coughs> um, I'm going to refer to what I mentioned earlier on. But for your thing here, it's, hmm, I, I won't say really dumb move by basically introducing, no. It's one of those things where, I, I want to say that it's corporate mandate, but at the same time too, Jeremy has been known to writ, uh, write this way. So I got no idea what's the... Yeah, you know, I, I got no idea. This is one of those things where I see what you're doing. And you know what? I, I'm going to refer to the MBS show episode number 466. Like, to me, this feels like pandering to... Yeah, just pandering. It feels that way and... I don't know how I feel about it. But at the same time too, if they want to move to that fact because they want to make people feel like they belong, I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, Basically, give and take and just uh, leave what you don't like. Uh. <coughs> anyway, uh, last one is... <laughs> of course... The villain is Batman all along. With the pony, uh, with the pony made trees, I think the Griffins, Griffin tree will be somewhere else and not with Griffin stone. Griffins. So, um, I I know when I mentioned this before, I won't be reading up all uh, my my comments because uh, I wanted to express to you guys like oh. Maybe I changed my mind or something like that, or it could be the same, or who knows. But what I written here as a reply was kind of cool. <laughs> so, <clears throat> obviously the joke. It was the DCU. How could I not see it? Andy Price was warning us all along. XD face, smiley. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. And that's an interesting theory. Yeah, I can see it. The griffin from the town that Flash Magnus saved, uh, that was part of the comic, if I'm not mistaken, uh, decides that they had enough with the king and split off into another group. They set a, set, um, sorry, um, they set a settle, um, settlement far from Griffinstone and were forgotten. Fast forward, the party arrived in Griffinstone, made up with Gilda, 
Gildal tells them she hears someone calling for her to go to set location and from there our adventure starts so yeah it probably wouldn't be Gilda, it probably be something else i mean it would be cool if it was gallus so yeah probably no gallus couldn't be yeah because gallus is already part of the um student six yeah so he's already there mm. so gilda greta who knows gabby gabby will be nice too so we'll see i mean <laughs> if we do get the griffins and if we do hit that place I, I do wish that they do that because it's it brings up an inter interesting um side story because wait there's more griffins in uh there's more griffins outside of griffinstone so yeah i mean uh, but they didn't invite flash magnus by the way so We'll have to wait and see what they do. I mean, I could be wrong and it could be in Griffinstone and then yeah, a bit boring, but <laughs> and yeah, and that's the um <clears throat> uh comments for this issue. Uh if you do like uh how things are going with this one, do comment down below telling me that you enjoy it and I'll do more of it. And if you want more, I'll give you more. So let's wrap things up. <clears throat> So, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at imagergmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also, uh, Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponylive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya.